Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for spending a Saturday morning here. And welcome to the 8th Annual uh, Vermont Tech Jam, brought to you by Dealer.com and My Web Grocer. I'm Julia Atherton with 7 Days, and before we start this presentation, I just want to thank our sponsors. Uh, without them, this wouldn't be possible. Uh, Biotech, Champlain College, IBM, uh, Cura Green Mountain, Logic Supply, Merchants Bank, Middlebury Interactive Languages, the Vermont Agency of Education, and the Vermont Technology Council and the Vermont Technology Alliance. On behalf of the Tech Jam organizers, uh, Seven Days and the Tech Alliance, I'd like to welcome you to How to Get Hired presentation. Uh, we've got recruiters here from YWeb Grocer, Logic Supply, and Champlain College. This panel today is going to be moderated by Pat Boera of Champlain College. Take it away, Pat. Thank you very much, Julia, and welcome everybody. Um, I'm delighted to sit in the company of three people that I get to interact with often. And we're going to start by having them tell you each a little bit about the organizations they represent. And then Corey Grenier, who has coordinated this event, has given us some questions to address ahead of time. But I've also collected some questions from the audience. And if time permits, we'll open it up to even more questions at the end of the session. So I'm going to ask the lady at my far left, my colleague Mary Lee, to get us started to tell you a little bit about the organization she represents. Great, thanks Pat. I'm also pleased to be able to sit next to um, my colleagues here that I have both worked with and have been peers with in the HR world for a long time. So it's exciting to, to be here with, with all three of you. Uh, so I work for Champlain College. I'm the human resources uh, leader. Um, so I oversee all of our um, staff and faculty hiring, um, communication, benefits, employer relations, organizational development efforts for the, for the institution. And um, Champlain College was originally founded in the 1800s, um, primarily to be focused on a, a kind of secretarial and entry level positions in business organizations. And over time, it has changed, as many of you may know if you've been here for a while, it changed um, about uh, 12 years ago to a four-year college. And we have now added master level programs, um, both online, uh, adult learning, continuing professional studies, and traditional environments. Um, I came to Champlain about two years ago and Quite frankly, never would have thought I would see myself working in higher education um, if anybody had said that to me 20 years ago. Um, I think Champlain is really different and really unique than many other higher ed institutions. Um, the culture is vibrant, it is nimble, it is quick, it is incredibly responsive to not only what's happening in the uh, environment today, but also for what we believe will be happening down the road. Um, and we're also creating jobs for those industries that have not yet found themselves, um, really kind of the emerging, emerging um, industries out there. Um, we are focused on providing jobs, um, creating jobs, um, having our students leave and be ready to move into professionally based jobs. We have a 90% placement rate uh, for our students coming out of our traditional undergrad. Uh, many of our um, on adult online students are either working right now or are transitioning into other environments. Um, so it's a, it's a great environment. Um, we do have a lot of technology-based jobs, some in the kind of emerging area around gaming, cybersecurity. Um, we have a table up top uh, here today that's um, focused on cybersecurity and gaming. Mark, take it away. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so I'm the uh, HR director at Logic Supply, and uh, I, I do everything Mary does, but with a, with a much smaller staff. <laughs> um, and actually, we work uh, very closely uh, with Champlain, and they do do a fantastic job of preparing kids for, for the real world, for, for lack of a better term. Um, so Logic Supply, we are a uh, computer hardware company. We make custom computer systems for industrial or commercial applications, and we sort of play in a, in a particular niche where um, our computers are, are really good for rugged or harsh environments where your ordinary computers could not go. Uh, think mining vehicles four miles below the surface of the earth, uh, manufacturing floor workstations where there's a lot of dust, dust debris, uh, shock, you know, computers and garbage trucks, walls of slaughterhouses, 
It's one of my favorite examples. Um, but um, so it's 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 sort of a we're all we're all B two B. We don't sell to the to the consumer market. Um, we are uh, located in South Burlington. Um, we're headquartered here in Vermont. We're actually in, in the midst of an expansion, which is very exciting. We're growing from about a, a 15,000 foot uh, facility to, to over 36,000 square feet. So we're more than doubling the size, growing at a fairly rapid rate, which is also very exciting and challenging from an HR point of view. So this is a great, great time to be talking to you about how to get hired. Um, and uh, we also have locations in uh, the Netherlands. They do sales and production for the EU countries. We sort of handle the rest of the world. And then we have an office in, in Taiwan, uh, out in Taipei, that has traditionally been mostly just sourcing of components and, and supply chain management. We're also beginning to add some engineering capacity out there as well. Um, but we are growing here in Vermont. Uh, pretty much have open positions in just about every department at, at a few different levels. And uh, it's really exciting. I'll just also say that one of the, I think, unique things about Logic Supply and sort of core to us from a company culture point of view is just our transparency. Uh, we're about as open a company as you get, uh, just really internally, uh, completely open office. I have no office. The CEO has no office. We're all functionally you know, located where we need to be to, to do the job. Um, we're open book. We share financial results with everybody. Uh, we are open salary. Want to know what somebody's making from the toilet bowl cleaner up to the CEO owner? Jump on the Google Doc. We want to have that conversation. So there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of information out there for folks to for folks to have at Logic Supply to to be able to do the job. And we are, uh, I would say, work hard, play hard, folks. We try to be as fast, nimble, and uh, and have as much fun as possible. But we at the end of the day, we want to get the job done so we can all go home to friends and family and have fun. Anyway, more to come. Great. Glenn, talk to us about what's happening over at MyWebGrocer. Well, I am a um, recruiter at MyWebGrocer. I've been there about four years now, so as you can imagine, I've seen a lot of resumes. Um, <laughs> I was probably employee 92 or so uh, then, and we're about 210 right now. Um, and we were only in the U.S. at that time, but now we've got a few grocery retailers in Canada, New Zealand, and soon to be uh, Latin America. So. What we do is we create software applications that are basically all web-based um, for grocery retailers, and they in turn will offer that to the shoppers. So things like online grocery shopping, um, coupons, recipes, building a shopping list, the weekly flyers or circular that you see pretty much everywhere around the store. Um, and the other side of our business is digital advertising. So what we do is we target the manufacturers who have products in grocery stores like a Kellogg's or a Kraft or Green Mountain Coffee is actually a pretty big client. Um, and we put that advertising on the web pages that we sell to the retailers. So essentially we've put, taken the retailer and the manufacturer and put them on the same place in the web which is in front of their target audience which is the grocery shopper. Um, what, culture-wise, um, we're a very fluid company. Things change pretty much weekly, it seems like. Mm -hmm. um, who you were reporting to, like, as your manager, last week may be different the next week. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. We do it to try to stay on top of the market, competitors, etc. cetera. Um, so if you're someone who does not like change, it, it's not going to be the best environment. Um, but uh, it makes it, we are unique, and uh, we kind of have a, a formula that uh, we try to follow, which is like happy employees plus happy customers equal new opportunities. And I think that's been a very big reason for our success um, for the last seven, eight plus years. Great. Excellent. So I'm going to skip around a little bit on our question list, and I'd like to start with um, tips for people who want to boost their chances of being hired at your respective organizations. Let's go down to Mary to start. Okay, I'm gonna actually um, have you think about this, not so much even in the context of Champlain College, but really of getting hired anywhere. And um, I can probably say that all of us combined have, have interviewed or reviewed resumes of, what do you think, maybe 25,000? Thousands. Thousands, thousands, thousands. <laughs> and um, so I have the mindset that I am always recruiting. 
like literally always recruiting, whether it's that I'm going to Shaw's and I'm checking out at the grocery counter and I'm talking to the person behind the, the, the cashier, to the dinner party that I'm going to go to tonight, to the 15 or 20 of you sitting, sitting here right now. I am always recruiting. So every time I meet somebody, I'm thinking, huh, would they be good for Champlain College, for the job today or the job tomorrow? And I'm going to give you an example. Um, a couple years ago, I was, uh, it was June, and I was walking up and down Church Street with my then, um, I think, six-year-old son. And there was a, a cart, you know, one of, the, one of the carts that are on Church Street. And um, this cart was called the Handsome Pancake. And I thought it was really kind of interesting. And so I went up and I chatted with the guy for a few minutes. I didn't have, a, I didn't have any intention of getting a handsome pancake, but I chatted with the guy because I was kind of curious. And we carried on our way up the top of Church Street and came back and talked to him for a few minutes later. Next Saturday, same kind of drill. Go up on Church Street. My son and I are down there. We stop and talk to him. We hear, and so I'm, I'm hearing the story unfolding about what's going on with him. And he had just come back, actually, from the military. And at the time, I was working at National Life Group in Montpelier. And uh, he was attending Champlain College um, and was going to be graduating in December. And I said, you know, we have some great internships. You should think about exploring it. Well, that guy, Mike, got hired. And he is in a very successful career, um, making north of 100000 in a sales role. He actually moved his family down to the Texas area a couple year, or, uh, about, a, about a year ago. And um, had that connection not happened, had I not taken the time, had he not engaged, there's no doubt about it, he would not have gotten hired. So um, be mindful of where you are, who you're talking to, whether it's a manager in an organization or recruiter, they're, they're on and they're seeking people that are gonna join your org their organization. Great, and I, I love how you turn that around, Mary, to you're, you're always recruiting and so uh, if, Mark and Glenn sort of address the broader question yeah. too. That's yeah. terrific. Uh, ABR, always be recruiting. That's on that's on company slides when we're talking to the whole company. We we put that on everybody. Um, the flip side of that is always be networking. Always be interviewing. Um, we talk to people and we yeah we might say no right now. It doesn't mean never. Um, there are folks we've talked to any number of times and then come back around and it turns out there's a better match a, a year down the road. Or, Few, few years down the road. Um, I'll get a little more, more granular just from, from what we look for and whatnot. I'll, I'll say culture fit is way more important than technical skill. Uh, I can buy technical skill. You can't buy culture fit. Uh, so we, we really look for it. It's not to say we don't need fantastic technical skills or, or functional abilities or whatnot. We, we look for rock stars in that, that capacity as well. But um, we will go without. You know, you can hire, there can be functional rock stars and somebody that's not a good fit for your organization. Uh, so we look for, we want doers. You know, don't tell me what you're responsible for. Tell me what you've done. If any of you have the words responsible for in your resumes, please remove them. Start with an actual verb <laughs> with the appropriate tense that says what you did, not, not the hypothetical job description. Um, and we really want that what, what can you do? Are you a good values match? I mentioned the, the openness. I, I really do go to, to sort of how transparent logic supply is. <laughs> we are awesome. I love working there. Um, but given how transparent we are, um, directly or indirectly, all of your work, everything that you do is visible to everybody else in the company at some point in time, mostly pretty much right away. That's a ton of pressure. And given the fact that we, we put ridiculous expectations on ourselves, our peers, new hires, interns, um, whoever they might be, uh, we really want folks that are gonna thrive in that kind of environment. And uh, you know, we, we are transparent to make sure folks have uh, the information they need to do their job, and it drives accountability. And I don't mean from a, a top-down big brother sort of view. I, I feel the pressure every day. I've got 55 plus eyes, sets of eyes looking at me saying, who are you, who are you bringing in to interview to who's gonna sit next to me, maybe? And are they gonna be worth working with? Um, we feel that pressure from within, you know, and from, from our peers to really do the best job we can. 
and we want folks that are going to thrive in that kind of environment. Part of, part of my shtick, I say this during, during interviews, I'll say, it, I'll say it now, is that we either get to the point where we want to link arms, jump off the cliff, and be okay with the fact we don't really know what's at the bottom. Ch change is constant. We're, we're all in high-tech fields, frankly. I, I include Champlain in that as well, given, given their focus on that area. And if you're not running paranoid, looking over your shoulder, wondering what's around the corner, you're going to die a, a very unforeseen, <laughs> quick, quick death. Uh, and in, a, in an environment where no walls between you and you and your mistakes <laughs> for others to see, uh, if you're not comfortable with failure, with adjusting on the fly, um, and having a lot of responsibility to get stuff done, uh, you will end up in the corner in the fetal position somewhere sucking your thumb. And I, <laughs> we never get there because we have, hopefully, if it's not a good match, we don't we don't bring folks on, um, and if it if it isn't, we operate on no surprises. We can be very, very forward. Uh, we're not yellers and screamers. We just say it like it is, and it's a it is a brilliant, fantastic work environment when when it's a win win. Um, and if it's not a win win for us, we will go without. Uh, and so should you. I I really think as as job seekers, be be really picky. Life is too short to spend a lot of time doing something you don't, you don't enjoy, being around people that, that aren't your kind of people, whatever that might be. And that's when we talk about culture fit, we all, we all know inside of our head what we, we know it when we see it, given our respective companies. Um, but that's, that's really important. And for us, if you're not comfortable with that level of transparency and putting yourself out there, your work product out there, being approached by folks, being able to respond without being defensive and whatnot, tough to work at Logic Supply, regardless of, of skill set. Um, we, we include that side in the skill set we're looking for. And that's, that's really key for us. So just not just with my web grocer, but in general, I would say, um, if you want to increase your chances of being hired, I, I would always say, look to who you know. Um, it's, it's a small market here. Um, I can't tell you how many people I talk to that are like, oh, I know so-and-so at where you work and this person. Uh, you, you must know someone who works at some of these companies in the area that are hiring. And I would just leverage that connection. Mm -hmm. um, most companies actually, they have employee referral bonuses. I know that we pay them. Um, they can range from anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 for if we hire the person. So they'll, they'll be on your side. Um, and if, even if it's as simple as just forwarding their resume to me, um, the chances are if they do that, I, even if we don't have a position for them right now, I'll have a phone interview with them. Maybe I'll meet them for lunch, something like that, just as a kind of a favor because they've been referred. So then that person now has, knows me, my phone number, my email address, and they can stay on the radar. Um, I think it works like that a lot of places. Yeah. Um, it's it's really, I mean, and with things like LinkedIn these days, I mean, if you're not on LinkedIn, I would make it a point to do that immediately, like after you get home tonight. Um, but there's a lot of ways to connect through that network as well. Um, and just if you ask someone to, be, to introduce you to somebody through a site like LinkedIn, usually they'll do it. And you can, you never know where it's going to go. Yeah. Right. I think we're going to uh, jump to a question that an audience member posed while I was circulating, and that is, um, there seems to be a disconnect between the needs of industry and the candidates who are out there. What message do you have that colleges and universities can do to provide candidates who meet your needs, not only in the technical areas, but in all areas? So what are some things that colleges and universities can do that then people can go there for training to meet your openings? Anybody jump in? I will jump in. Okay. Um, what I, uh, we got this, I was giving a, a talk yesterday and the same, the same question came up and I, my, my very flip answer is, is you know, I happen to be an, an, a CS professor uh, from, from the University of Vermont and I, say this to anybody, I said, you know, what can we do better as educators? And I said, teach the techies more about business and teach the business folks more about the techie stuff. Uh, and I, I'll sort of leave it at, at that very high level. We, we want well-rounded problem solvers. 
Another line I, you know, I want to hire smart business people with excellent technical skills. And that includes, the if your technical skills engineers, if it's HR, if it's sales, whatever your functional responsibility is, but, but are, are you entrepreneurial? Are you, are you broader than your, than maybe the, can you add more value than what your task, what the task in front of you today might actually speak to? Um, I think the way that can get, the way that happens, frankly, with, with Champlain College, with UVM, with, with good educational institutions that are doing a lot of stuff, I, I compliment Champlain College. They really are preparing kids for the real world through internships, through, um, they have a lot of adjunct professors that are also doing, <laughs> um, rather, than, rather than only teaching. I don't, I don't say that's the only way to do it, but um, engaging with the business community in a variety of different ways is really important. There's a time for a lecture, and there's a time to invite somebody in just to throw questions up at the wall and see what's actually happening out there. Um, internships, co-ops, part-time jobs, whatever, however that can be facilitated by the school, but also for you as well. You should be, you should be pounding down the door of, of career services, of, of, by the way, not just for students, but if you're alumni, go back to your schools, how can, you know, Where's the alumni network that I can tap into? What, what can you do for me as an alumni? I paid you a lot of money, had a great experience. Now it's five years later, it's 10 years later. How can I tap back into that network? Um, so I think, you know, broaden the, the scope of how we're teaching our students uh, to include what they're actually gonna get exposed to while they apply their technical skill or the, that specific skill set they're really learning is very important and figuring out how to help students engage with the business community in 55 different ways and a thousand tomorrow, hopefully, um, I, I think is critical. We were just talking about internships before, <laughs> before you know, how are you hiring your software developers? Well, we, you know, we'll typically bring on interns and then we, you know, we'll, we'll keep X number of them. That, you know, at my web, I know they have a fantastic internship program. Should we work with Champlain College on that? We have interns. Mary, in a past life, worked for another great company that, that frankly, was known for, for you know, sort of bringing on folks like yeah, giving internship opportunities. That was their recruitment channel. So engagement with the business community, whatever that means in whichever direction that takes. Great. Mary, That's my soapbox. Sorry. Anything to add to that? Well, I think, you know, I think at Champlain, our commitment really is to Vermont employers. Um, and we have a, a kind of a cycle, if you will, or a circular way of kind of bringing back what's happening in the real world and organizations into our curriculum. So as Mark just shared, we do have adjuncts that they have kind of a, a day job. They're, they have professional day jobs um, in organizations. And so through them, we hear what's happening out there, what is the need within um, organizations, they bring that back into our curriculum. Our interns are doing the exact same thing, so they go out, they're learning, they're working in these organizations, and there's either gaps or um, we have professors that are going out. Um, we're deeply committed to that, and we have really strong relationships. Dealer.com is a perfect example, I think, and actually Logic, yep. um, too. Well, even my web, all of them, I guess. Um, where we are embedded at many, many different levels. We have some, um, leadership programs where we're out there training leaders in these organizations and so we're hearing about what are those what are those uh, those gaps do we have work to do absolutely and um, you know IBM is a good example right now of what's happening and um, have we done what we needed to do as an institution and as a community to help um, bridge skills and um, you know uh, kind of institutional, um, support to those uh, to, to places like IBM. So it's a it's a deep commitment that Champlain has. Um, president Lockman, our new president, just had his inauguration last weekend, and online somewhere I think is his inauguration speech. And you will hear him speak to our commitment to Vermont, Vermont jobs, Vermont students. Um, we want to be a net importer. So we want students to come here, learn, grow. Yes, true Ed, yeah. Uh, learn, grow, and then stay. Um, and many of our students do stay um, in, the, in the community. Mark just wrote down true Ed. True Ed is a program that we just introduced within the last year, and it is a partnership program 
in corporate um, or businesses. And so we've partnered with organizations like Fletcher Allen, um, Dealer.com, Cisco. Logic Supply. Logic Supply. <laughs> um, I don't know, my web. Is my web doing it? Do you know? Yeah, so, um, but basically we have provided a, a subscription model to provide an educational benefit to employees yeah. working in those organizations to receive um, ongoing courses, ongoing graduate degrees at substantially less than if they were outside in other organizations. It's an unbelievable program. Um, so people can literally receive uh, a master's degree program or a bachelor's degree program for less than half the cost of what they would have uh, otherwise. So it's a, it's a it's partnership actually, program. It's, it's better than 50% savings. Um, we actually have two... Uh, our recruiter is getting her finishing up her MBA online at Champlain and is now true ed, getting taking advantage of that. Our CFO decided he needed an MBA. I don't know why. Um, he's doing it, and our bookkeeper is getting her accounting certificate because she actually didn't have formal training as uh, in finance um, through the True program. And we're a fifty some odd person company here in Vermont. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Glenn, any comments on? I think they pretty much covered everything. Right okay. There. All right. Another question we had from the audience is, clearly this is a tech jam and there's a focus on tech-oriented positions. And it seems that in the newspapers and online, all you see is tech, tech, tech. What are your organization's needs for non-tech folks? Maybe just at, at the moment. Um, I'll start. Yeah. Okay. Um, so non-technical roles, um, we are becoming, we're very close to having our first few clients in Latin America. Um, so we actually just started thinking about, well, how are we going to support those stores using our software? Um, so we decided to try and hire three Spanish bilingual customer support reps here in Vermont, which I, going into the search, I was, I didn't have high hopes, um, but you'd be surprised at how many are here um, and have are fluent. Yep. Um, so I mean, we've already hired one. We have possibly another, and we're still looking for a third. So I mean, that's an example. I'm sure we're going to have more as we expand into other countries, roles like this. And if we can support it and find the people here in Vermont, I mean, we will keep those positions here. Great. Um, other roles that we look for: non-technical, um, digital marketing. It's Got, I know digital has some technical ring to it, but um, you don't necessarily have to come into those roles with that skill set. It's something that if you're a cultural fit um, for the team, we can bring you on and treat you how to do that. Um, I don't know that currently we, we really have non-technical roles right now. Um, well, I suppose we're, we're actually rapidly expanding our sales team, but and we look for sales DNA and the ability to pick up the tech, right? So it's 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 um, it's a heavily technical technical role, but um, but we really do look for for sort of good sales qualities on, on that front. Um, we've uh, just we just we've had 16 open positions for a 50-person company for the past month and a half. So we've we've hired about half. So we've um, some of the roles we've recently filled. We we added uh, a couple of different folks, both on the digital marketing side and then on the biz dev side, on business development side. So that was a, a fairly, um, I guess it could be called a non-technical role, although uh, there's a lot of technology involved in it. I'm sort of going to say there's not a role at Logic Supply that doesn't have a good fair amount of technical <laughs> needs, even you know the accounting team, we just implemented a new ERP, so just going through that whole platform and whatnot, you might bring some sort of accounting and finance background to you, but to apply it from either our, our back-end systems point of view or to just know what, what widgets are getting pushed around it, it does require some good, some good technical background. But I will say, I, I'll echo Glenn, I, we're, I think we were saying the same thing. Every role is going to have some technology, but um, we look for, for different kinds of DNA and then that ability to pick up the tech. If, if you know, that translator will not be successful if three months in, 
he or she is still lost and just how to log on and, and, and figure out the platform to, to do the job and whatnot. Um, but uh, I think our non-technical roles are probably sort of traditionally uh, sales, finance, uh, marketing in some respects. I'll actually start by sharing um, a job that we're going to be recruiting for. We haven't even started yet, but it's actually an executive director for a Green Mountain Higher Education Consortium. So about, uh, well, almost two years ago now, we formed, Champlain College formed a consortium with St. Mike's and Middlebury. And um, we are going to be hiring an executive director to head up that consortium. Um, this will be somebody who's got strong business skills, strong leadership, who can bring together three um, very distinct different entities and look and see how can we leverage um, things to either um, get greater buying power. So as an example, could we all buy toilet paper from the exact same vendor and reduce our toilet paper costs by X percent? Um, could we look at consolidation or uh, efficiencies in health insurance? Could we look at buying power related to um, computer storage um, technology solutions? So it's a um, really, I think it's an amazing role, really exciting role, an important one, um, soon to be posted. We should have that up probably by the end of um, November, but I'll take resumes at any time. Um, and then outside of kind of our technical and also faculty teaching positions, we have a number of positions open right now in our graduate admissions area. Um, we are, uh, I'm gonna call, almost desperately looking for people who can help us to bring um, and recruit talent to our institution, um, uh, both in terms of traditional grad and then also in our continuing professional studies areas. Really, that's an area that's gonna be significantly um, growing in the next couple of years. We, we are, um, for the most part, set at what we can have in terms of our traditional um, student population. So online learning will be um, significant. So we're looking for people who can help in the marketing efforts, people who can develop course curriculum, people who can um, kind of uh, monitor and support our students from an advising um, and in coaching, coaching perspective. Great. So as HR professionals, you're really on the forefront of what's coming down the pike. So I'd like you to look into your crystal balls and tell our audience what are some trends that they can be on top of and be thinking about with regard to the hiring process. What's going to give these audience members a competitive edge when they're applying to your organizations or those you might know about through other colleagues in the HR profession? Whoever is ready can jump in. Uh, I, I don't know if anyone has had the chance to do this yet, but video interviewing is becoming more and more popular where instead of me getting the resume, and we're not doing this yet, I will say that, but instead of, as an example, I get a resume, and instead of just making an appointment to have a phone interview with them, I would send out a link to a job interview that they basically would record of themselves in front of their computer and answering a certain number of questions um, that we have already kind of posed for them. So then we, when we have the time, myself, hiring managers could go back and look at those videos and decide are they a potential fit or not. I mean, like I said, we're not doing it yet. I think as we continue to grow and we're in other countries, different time zones, that's something we are going to look at. But it's an intro, I mean, start practicing, I guess. Uh, that's I give my advice at this point. I think, so, I think dealer.com and Fletcher Allen might be doing that Fletcher for certain Allen's. roles now. Yeah. Love that idea. Yeah, thank right. you, Glenn, for... <laughs> no, and, um, wow, I'll just riff off of that. I, and by the way, we're all giving the same advice and sort of, I could say that, but I will say this and, and why not, it's... it's Awesome to sit up here with, with folks who are like-minded and going through some of the same challenges and whatnot. But um, I, I'll say people are interviewing differently. Um, I'll put it in a different context. We are a, we're a fast-growing company. We are always trying to get more efficient in our process. We, we are very proud of our gauntlet that we make everybody go through. Because um, uh, really, it, it 
it takes a lot to figure it out. And, and one, of the, one of the bigger challenges, I think, is how to do that in an efficient way. Um, we've got a new building coming up. We're going to be in different space. I was chatting with our recruiter the other day. Sort of we're planning for 2015. And, and don't take it this way. It, it will sound colder than it's meant. But I said, you know, we've, we've really, you know, we're entering the next couple of years. We've got to figure out how to process people faster. I want that sort of front section of the building to be a people factory in and out, really lean, let's identify fantastic talent, let's not waste anybody's time, not ours, not the candidates. You know, how can we assess skill? What are the steps we really need to do to, to be just very efficient at, at hiring? It's a, it's a different kind of manufacturing line. Um, we're, we're big into lean manufacturing and whatnot. Everybody in the company, regardless of role, whether they're in production or, or sitting in finance or in HR, goes through lean 101s. So we're, we're constantly thinking of how do we, you know, what's our continuous improvement cycle? Every department, every quarter has their own continuous improvement initiative. Uh, we're doing that, whether it's I'm going to tweak the form, I'm going to make this better, I'm going to save some time. We, we kicked that off this past year. And it's really good. From the hiring point of view, we are challenged with how to keep up with pace of a fast growing company, or just how to be able to do more always. And that's going to, you know, this is a great example. I, I will say that is a that is a, an idea born out of maybe the trend of, holy cow, we, you know, we stick to traditional methods of accepting applications, interviewing candidates. Um, there just aren't enough hours in the day to do it justice. Uh, not for you as, as candidates, not for us as employers either. And we don't want to, we are all looking for good matches. It, there's no win. There's no win-lose scenario, whether you're winning and we're losing, or, or vice versa. That that works for anybody. So I think um, you've got to be ready for be a good phone interview. If it's it might be a Skype call. It could be you know actually speaking to a camera. Well, I always say speaking to a phone is different than talking to a person live. Skype's interview. You know Skype interviews are weird. This is even stranger. You gotta you gotta be dynamic. Make eye contact to a camera lens. That is a whole different thing. Um, you're not sitting in your bedroom in your feety pajamas um, talking on the phone. Just remembering, don't forget to smile because they can hear you smile through the phone. It's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole new thing. So I, I'll, I'll just sort of say, I don't know what's coming next and how we try to get more efficient in the hiring process, but I'm gonna Google video interviewing when I step off this panel and say, boy, That'd be interesting, because because the other thing we always say is, hey, get into the system. Don't see something you like, <laughs> you know. Submit a general application. We never take down our internship posting. Half of the year, I sort of say, get in the system. You're going to get a nice email from me that says, thank you, but we're not filling any roles right now. But that way, I've got a pipeline of candidates to to really go through. This is one more layer where I'll say, hey, I'm I'm happy to have anybody submit a video, a five minute video thing just to be in the system. And the more information we can get in a more efficient way, we're better at hiring, we can see more of you. It's also a fantastic opportunity to sort of say, this is me. You can assess culture fit and whatnot. So anyway, that's, that's awesome. Well, actually, I just want to make a comment, really. One, I love the video idea. And I wouldn't wait until that technology got out mm -hmm. there, until an organization asked you to, to do it. Go home, start practicing, create a video, and send it in now. You know, don't wait. You know, if you know of, of a uh, manager in an organization or HR, get get a video in. I would love, absolutely love, to get a five-minute, short, sweet, you know, um, something that captures who you are. I would be, oh, I would be dancing, dancing. Love it. Um, but you know, as I listen to Mark, I mean, the the reality is the recruiting the recruiting game has changed significantly over the last twenty years. It was all paper, right? Mm -hmm. And so we would have stacks and stacks of of paper, and 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 those would get filed, and we'd go. They went through the back black hole back then, and we still have candidates that go through the black hole because of the the advancements in the applicant um, tracking systems that have taken place and so forth. Um, but we also have resumes coming in from all over the world in, in probably all of these organizations. And so the applicant, the number of applicants are, are higher. You know, and if you think about it as a funnel, so there's a bunch of people that are going to apply for a job, and you know, a quarter of them are not even going to know where Vermont is. Um, so they automatically kind of get out. And then a quarter of them are not really going to be serious about relocation. And then a quarter of them are not. So it starts to get really funneled down pretty quickly. And, 
we're trying to get that funnel down as, as quickly as we possibly can. So for me, it almost doesn't matter what the, what the new social media or the new technology is. It's around how can you differentiate yourself from that. And, um, you know, there are still a lot of really small ways that you can do that. Um, I remember having a really incredibly tough day one time. I got to my desk at 11 o'clock and somebody had sent me lunch. It was a white plastic, white paper bag with a sandwich, a drink, and an apple in it. And they stuck their resumes in it, resume in it. And, you know, some people were a little offended by it. But honest to God, I was like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I, there, I absolutely interviewed that person. Um, they didn't get hired, but here and there, they got, they got their way in to the organization. And, you know, another time, again, um, we don't do as much of this anymore. I mean, we rarely get paper these days. It's all coming in through the applicant tracking systems. But, you know, I got a resume one time, and there was two little dice in the envelope, tiny little dice. And the whole theme of the, of the cover letter was roll the dice on me. Well, that person got an, got an interview. And so, you know, what's, what's your foray into getting in the door that's going to be different than this, this box of social media, this box of um, an applicant tracking system that is getting funneled down? So, so be creative. And, you know, it's obviously it's easier if you're, you're here local um, versus trying to get a job in California. But there are definitely ways of, of being creative. Actually, I remember somebody sent a cake one time, and the resume was on the cake. You know, like you go to Shaw's. It was beautiful. Well, you're going to be interviewed with that kind of kind of um, creativity. I I gotta I gotta follow up on this because, and here's the risk in that, not the downside, but here's the risk in that. If you're going to go big, you got to knock it out of the park. So so to go big or go home, we actually had a. Um, I have more stories like that that I could tell, but I I, I do want to share one. Um, it is a great differentiator. You also have to know you're putting yourself out there. Had they not caught Mary on the day she needed <laughs> that, it could have gone down a different way. But, but that's the risk you take. And honestly, if you put yourself out there in a really big way, and it doesn't go that way, <laughs> um, you gotta be okay with that. I would sort of say, if you're gonna go big, clean, nail it. We actually had a six pack dropped off one time, six pack of beer. And literally, kid walked up to the door, handed, handed whoever a brown paper bag and said, would you please deliver this to HR? So they, our production leader comes up, says, I don't know what this is, but <laughs> hope it's, it's not ticking. It was actually what he, what he said, so great. So I look into it, pull out six pack, of, a switch pack. And what, what the candidate had done was cut out his, cut up his resume, and pasted it onto the bottles. And this was for a marketing role. His problem was he cut up his normal resume and pasted it on the bottles, and it wasn't that great a resume from a graphic point of view, and it wasn't lined up to fit on a label, so. We sat there and spent a great deal of time saying he should have come up, if you're going to do the label, come up with the custom label. And the, the resume could have been the ingredients and blah, blah, blah. And it, it, it could have been, wow, you could have knocked this out of the park so many different ways. Better yet, don't go the label because that's too hard and the glue came through the paper and it looks funky and it's uneven. You got a six pack here. You've got these big square parts of the box itself. That would have been a better way to do it. And boy, you could have just, you know, he's a graphic designer candidate, and he could have, there were 72 other different ways, and at the end, poor kid, uh, we, we just mocked the effort for, for what it wasn't. He went big, and, and it was a failure. I called him up the next day to tell him. I said, hey, we're not gonna interview you, but I wanna give you, you know, but I gotta give you feedback. A, man, did you just put yourself out there and good for you. Do it again and again and again. But let me tell you why we're not gonna bring you in for this role. It's because you had an opportunity to really demonstrate your graphic design skills. You just used 
your objective language on the resume to, to stick it on the label. You, you could have shown us what you can do from a product design point of view and you know what were the better spaces on the physical thing you delivered to us. I, I gave him all the feedback in a really good way. It was, it was, it was a tough, con I could tell it was very tough for him to hear this. He put himself out there and it, it was tough. But I said, by the way, there aren't too many folks who would have even made this phone call. So I'm telling you, you gave it a good go. I'm happy to tell you why it was a miserable failure and then encourage you to improve it next time and do it again. It's just not going to be with us for now. Um, and so I think we all try to, you know, like Glenn was I saying, would have interviewed him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and we might and have. And we would have drank together. Time. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it also sort of depends. But, yeah. I, but the big, big thing is we wanted to give him the feedback and I wanted to sort of commend him on, hey, next time, it's good, you know, take this feedback to heart. I mean it from a really good place but go out and kill it in a different way. And it's interviewing is all about putting yourself out there. Um, we all want to see what we need to see. We look at it from different ways. Hey, what, you know, can you acknowledge a mistake for us? Is that being open? Is that being good? That's some humility. You know, there are a lot of different things, but um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. That's half of what I think we've all been talking about. Well, I hate to cut off the conversation, but my job as moderator is to do so. So I'd like to ask the audience to just um, put your hands together to thank our panelists. Appreciate it. And to, to remind all of you that these three folks sitting up here are terrific HR professionals and representatives of the industry. And I think you'll find that most people who are drawn to this line of work are there because they want to help people in their organization connect with great candidates. So um, there are lots of recruiters upstairs at this event. Go up and introduce yourself. Give them your best elevator pitch. And certainly, if you have individual questions that we didn't get a chance to cover today, I'm sure our three guests would be happy to stay and chat for a few minutes. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.